All right, everybody, welcome in. Ready for another deep dive. Always. What are we digging into today? Well, get this. Empathy, narcissism, and you guessed it. Self-care. But like all matched up together. Okay, now that's a combo I got to hear more about. Right. So we're diving into this blog post by Rosemary Ingato. She's a physician associate, by the way. All right. And she just drops this bomb of a question. Are you ready? Hit me. Can an empath truly destroy a narcissist? Whoa, hold up. Destroy. That's some intense wording right there. I know, right? And Goddard doesn't mess around. No, she definitely doesn't. Which is why I think this deep dive is going to be really interesting. She's not just spouting the usual empaths, good, narcissist, bad stuff. She's looking at the nitty gritty, the how and why these personalities get so entangled. Okay, before we go full on into the deep end, can we define those terms a little? Yeah. Empath, narcissist. <laughs> They're kind of buzzwords these days. Totally. It's easy to toss those labels around without really understanding what's going on beneath the surface, you know? At a basic level, yeah, most people get the gist. Empaths feel a lot, narcissists, not so much, except for themselves. But there's a whole spectrum of behavior within those. Right, right, totally. So when we say empath, we're talking about... Someone super tuned in to other people's emotions. Like, they don't just understand them, they practically absorb them. And a narcissist is, well, basically opposite. In a way, they're very much about themselves, their needs, their image, often lacking that deep empathy you find in... Well, empaths. Okay, so already I'm seeing how these two personality types could end up in some, shall we say, interesting dynamics. Exactly. And this is where Ingato's take on self-care really comes into play. She argues that it's not just about bubble baths and face masks, though those are nice too, but... It's a tool, like in the empath narcissist showdown. Precisely. She actually recommends a self-care mental health assessment calculator. Hold up. A calculator. Yep. It's about figuring out where you stand, self-care-wise, especially if you're in a dynamic with a narcissist. Okay, now this I gotta hear more about. Like, how does that even work? It's pretty interesting, actually. See, when an empath is constantly absorbing a narcissist's, well, let's call it intense energy, it can be totally draining. Ingato's saying that prioritizing your own well-being isn't selfish, it's what gives you the strength to handle these kinds of relationships. So it's less about fixing the narcissist and more about protecting yourself. Exactly. Setting boundaries, knowing your limits, because here's the kicker. When you're depleted, you can't effectively empathize with anyone, let alone someone who thrives on that energy. That makes a lot of sense. It's about achieving balanced empathy, right? Like not running yourself dry, but making sure your own cup is full. You hit the nail on the head. And what's even more interesting is that Ingato doesn't just stop at narcissism. She talks about calculators for work burnout, trauma assessment, even social and loneliness, especially in the elderly. Wow, so she's connecting the need for self-care across all these different aspects of life whether it's dealing with a difficult personality or just the everyday stresses we all face. Absolutely. It's about recognizing that self-care is essential for navigating any relationship, even the one you have with yourself. 100%. So on that note, what are some of your go-to tools or practices for maintaining that balance, you know, keeping your own cup full? For me, it's got to be about boundaries, knowing when to step back, recharge, and finding those activities that just fill me back up a walk in nature, reading a good book, you know. But I'm actually curious, what about you? What are your self-care must-haves? And what about all of you listening? Ooh, good question. Definitely something to think about. Now, before we wrap up, let's circle back to Ingato's initial zinger. Can an empath destroy a narcissist? Mm -hmm. Where do we even begin unpacking that? Well, first off, I think that word destroy is very deliberate. It's provocative, makes you stop and think. And Honestly, I don't think it's about destruction in the literal sense. It's more about disrupting the dynamic, breaking free from a pattern that's become unhealthy. So not about one person winning over the other, but changing the whole game. Exactly. By prioritizing their own needs, setting firm boundaries, an empath essentially forces the narcissist to confront a situation they might not be used to. Interesting. So it could potentially lead to growth for both parties, even if it's not easy. Exactly. Not easy, but potentially very powerful. Lots to think about. So to leave everyone with a final thought, if self-care is so crucial, how can we all, each and every one of us, make it a more intentional practice in our lives? Because let's face it, we could all use a little more balance, a little more self-love in this crazy world, right? You got that right. Well, that was enlightening. Yeah. To more self-care and less destruction. Here, here. Thanks for joining us for this deep dive, everyone. Until next time.